Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjaliyamal Mahalingam Engineering College, Koyil Vinni. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture on the subject Fluid Mechanics and Machines. And this is lecture number 9.2. So, in the 9th chapter, second lecture, the topic what we are the topic we are discussing is flow through the pipelines and the topic we are going to discuss in this lecture hydraulic gradient line energy gradient line flow through compound pipe flow through parallel pipe branched pipe flow through chiffon power transmitted when the water is flowing through the pipeline the effect of water hammer and the commercial pipes in the earlier lecture in the same subject same topic, we discuss about the Reynolds experiment and we classified the flow whether this is laminar flow or turbulent flow and we discuss the major losses and minor losses and we, we have calculated, we have written the equations to calculate the major and minor losses in the flow through the pipes. The learning outcome to this lecture, at the end of the lecture, the student will be able to draw the HGL and the EGL, hydraulic gradient line and energy gradient line, calculate the head loss in the compound pipe, parallel pipe and branched pipe, explain the flow through this chiffon. Hydraulic gradient line, the sum of the potential head and the datum or the datum head and the pressure head at any point is called as piezometric head. So, the piezometric head equal to Z plus P, P by W. So, Z is the datum head or the potential energy, potential head and P by W is the pressure head. So, rho W is the specific weight rho into G. The line obtained by joining piezometric level at various points in the pipe flow system is called as hydraulic gradient line. So, at the different points in the pipeline, we calculate the piezometric head. Uh, for the horizontal flow through a pipe without any change in the diameter or the change in velocity, the hydraulic gradient line will be a horizontal line. When we have bend in the pipe or inclined pipe, so the, we have to calculate the potential uh, piezometric head at different points in the pipe flow and you have to draw the hydraulic gradient line. And the total energy line, the total head is the total head or total energy per unit weight of the unit weight with respect to any arbitrary datum is a sum of potential head, pressure head and velocity head. So, in the total head equal to Z plus P by W into plus V square by 2G. So, V square by 2G is the velocity head, P by W is the pressure head, Z is the datum head or the potential head, the total energy. So, this is from the Bernoulli's equation. Now, when we draw a line, the line obtained by joining the total head at different points in the pipe flow is called as total energy line TEL or energy gradient line EGL. So, this is the plot of the energy gradient line and hydraulic gradient line we in a flow through the pipeline, an inclined pipe system. We take the datum Z equal to 0, we have one point here and another point here. So, at this point, the height is Z1. And here point number 2, the Z, height is Z2 and the pressure head here, we calculate the pressure head, piezometric pressure head using the manometer and the piezometer here also we fit the piezometer to calculate the pressure head. So, here the pressure head is P, P1 by W and here the pressure head is P2 by W. Then we measure the velocity using the uh, proper instrument pitot tube and the velocity head here is V2 square by 2G, V1 square by 2G and here it is V2 square by 2G. So, the hydraulic gradient line is plotted, is drawn by the sum of Z and P1, Z1 plus P1 by W, Z2 plus P2 by W is the piezometric head and the plot of the piezometric head is called as hydraulic gradient line. And uh, the total energy line, now we calculate the, add the two values, piezometric head and the velocity head, then we will get the energy gradient line or the total head line, total energy line. So, for this is actually this type of diagram is required for uh, calculating the head, the total head required to raise the water. So, by, by calculating different types of uh, datum head, velocity head and the pressure head, we can calculate the total head of the water raise. So, that we can, it is this, this is a useful data to calculate the pumping power or the capacity of the pump for pumping the liquid. 
and the flow through the pipe in series or compound pipe. So, pipe in series or compound pipe are defined as a pipes of different diameter and different length are connected end to end in series to form a pipeline. So, we have different parameters here L1, L2, L3 are the length of the pipe. Uh, 1, 2, 3 respectively, D1, D2, D3 are the diameter of the pipe, V1, V2, V3 are the velocity of the pipe, F1, F2, F3 are the coefficient of friction of the pipe, 1, 2, 3 respectively, and H is the difference in the water level between in the tank. And the discharge in the pipe using the continuity equation, so Q equal to A1, V1 equal to A2, V2 equal to A3, V3. So, we look at the diagram. So, this is the compound pipe. So, connecting the two tanks A and B, and the head difference in the tank is H. Now, here this is pipe number 1, pipe number 2 and pipe number 3. So, the length of the pipe 1 is L1, diameter is D1, friction factor is F1 and length velocity is V1 and length of the pipe 2 L2, D2, F2 and V2 and L3, D3, V3 and F3. These are all the parameters for the pipe 3. Now, we have to calculate the total head here. So, the, the difference in the liquid level, liquid surface level is equal to the sum of the total head loss in the pipeline. So, now, H is the, so first we have a entrance here. So, this is the entrance, the loss in the entrance 0.5 V1 square by 2G. So, V1 is the velocity here. Then, between in the pipe 1, the frictional losses, major loss. So, the first one is the minor loss and second one is the major loss 4 F1 V L1 V1 square by 2G D1. Then, we have the contraction, sudden contraction. So, the for sudden contraction K into V2 square by 2G. So, K is the coefficient of contraction V2 square by 2G. V2 is the velocity at the outlet and the smaller pipe. Then again, the major loss in the second pipe, 4 F2 L2 V2 square by 2G D2. Then there is some sudden enlargement. The large uh, energy loss, head loss due to the enlargement, V2 square minus V3 square, V2 minus V3 whole square by 2G. Then the uh, head loss due to the, uh, for the larger pipe, pipe number 3 the friction major loss in the pipe number 3. So, 4 F3 L3 V3 square divided by 2 G D3. Then finally, the head loss for the exit of the pipe V3 square by 2 G. So, first one is the entrance of the pipe, second one is major loss in the pipe 1, then here sudden contra minor loss for the sudden contraction and major loss for the pipe 2, then uh, pipe I mean the sudden expansion sudden enlargement, the minor loss for the sudden enlargement and the major loss in the pipe number 3 and the exit loss, the minor loss, exit loss in the pipe 3. And uh, this is the total head difference. So, the total value sum of all the minor losses and the major losses between the A and B, the head A and B equal to H. Now, if the minor losses are neglected, normally we neglect the minor losses. In, when you have a large piping network, we neglect the minor losses. H equal to 4 F1 L1 V1 square by 2G D1 plus 4 F2 L2 V2 square by 2G uh, D2 plus 4 F3 V3 F3 L3 V3 square divided by 2G D3. So, this is the major losses, frictional losses in the pipe 1, frictional loss in the pipe 2 and frictional losses in pipe 3. Now, if the coefficient of friction is the same for all the pipe, F1, F2, F3 are the same value, then the equation is 4 F L1 V1 square by 2 G D1 plus 4 F L2 V2 square by 2 G D2 plus 4 F L3 V3 square by 2 G D3 or we can write 4 F by 2 G into L1 V1 square by D1 plus L2 V2 square by D2 plus L3 V3 square by D3 and this equation you have to remember. If you know how to write the equation minor losses and major losses, then it is easy. Otherwise, you have to remember this equation for compound pipe. When you have more number of pipes like this, you have to add L4, L4, V4 square divided by D4 like that. So, the, so, this is the head loss in the compound pipe or pipe in series. Then equivalent pipe. So, equivalent pipe is defined as a pipe of uniform diameter having loss of head and discharge equal to the loss of head and discharge of the compound pipe consisting of several pipe of the different length and diameter. So, the uniform diameter of equivalent pipe is called as equivalent diameter of the pipeline and length of the equivalent pipe is equal to sum of the length of compound pipe consisting of different pipe. So, in the previous equation, we have a, a compound pipe. 
so for the for instead of having different diameter of different diameter pipe different length pipe we can make it a single pipe that is pipe is called as equivalent pipe for equivalent pipe l by d5 equal to l1 by l1 by d1 to the power 5 plus l2 by d2 to the power 5 plus l3 by d3 to the power 5 and this equation is called as called as known as dupitz equation using this equation we can determine the equivalent diameter of the compound pipe so that is the advantage. so this equation also you have to remember uh, because using this equation sometimes you may calculate you may be uh, calculating the length of the equivalent pipe or the diameter of the equivalent pipe as the case may be then pipe in parallel so this is also uh, actually these are all the basic concepts in the total pipe network in a large municipality or corporation we are preparing a pipe network for water supply then we have to understand the pipe in parallel pipe in series and branched pipe then we have to use the knowledge for designing the pipe network in a uh, water supply system and in the pipe flow through parallel pipe so consider a main pipe which is divided into two or more branches and joined again as shown in the figure the flow rate in the main pipe equal to the sum of the flow rate in the branches branch pipes so capital q equal to q1 plus q2 so this is very much familiar very much easy to calculate so it is available in the diagram so when the pipes are arranged in parallel the loss of heat in each pipe branch pipe is the same so loss of heat in the pipe 1 equal to loss of heat in the pipe 2 so 4 f1 l1 v1 square by 2g d1 equal to 4 f2 l2 v2 square by 2g d2 when the friction factors are equal f1 equal to f2 so l1 v1 square by d1 equal to l2 v2 square by d2 then flow through branched pipe so for branched pipe so look at the construction we have different tank a b c and all the tanks are connected by the number of pipes so here we have to use the different equations to calculate the uh, head loss so z a is the height of the water level in the tank a z d is the height at the point d z z c is the height of water level in tank c and z b is the height of the water level in the tank b and we have the different parameters v1 velocity l1 length d1 diameter h of 1 is the uh, fri head loss due to friction in the pipe 1 and similarly in the pipe 2 and pipe 3 and we have a common datum from from where we are measuring the datum head so when two or more water reservoirs are connected by pipes having one or more junction the system is called as branching pipe system and the assumptions in the analysis of branched pipes are the minor losses are negligible the frictional losses in the pipe are calculated using the darcy weisbach equation the tanks are larger in size and constant head is maintained in the tank the flow in the pipe is steady and uniform these are all the assumptions for the calculation and the various equations used for the analysis of the branched pipe are continuity equation bernoulli's equation and darcy weisbach equation to calculate the frictional head so the for flow from a to d the bernoulli's equation z a equal to z t plus p d by rho g plus h of 1 similarly the flow between b d to b the bernoulli's equation z t plus p d by rho g equal to z b plus h of 2 and the flow between flow from flow from d to c from the bernoulli's equation z t plus p d by rho g equal to z c plus h of 3 and from the continuity equation the discharge through the pipe ad equal to discharge through the pipe db plus discharge through the pipe dc so we write pi by 4 d square d1 square v1 square equal to pi by 4 d2 square v2 square plus pi by 4 d3 square v3 square and uh, simplifying d1 square v1 equal to d2 square v2 plus d3 square v3 so this is a sample uh, diagram is given for uh, sim uh, simple diagram given for calculating the uh, loss of head uh, or uh, discharge through the pipeline but in a com complicated water supply system for municipality or corporation we have to carefully calculate and uh, we have to carefully write the equations uh, prepare the uh, diagram and then write the equation for calculating the head loss in the uh, uh, branched pipe system then we cal when we discuss about the flow through chiffon so so far we have discussed the incline water flow through a inclined pipe uh, or compound pipe or uh, parallel pipe now this is another system uh, for flow through chiffon where the water is flowing uh, across the large uh, hill 
a mountain water is flowing through the mountain as a siphon is laid over a hill the level of level of some length of the siphon will be above the water level in the reservoir at higher elevation so look at here these two tanks are connected by the pipeline and this is called as siphon so here look at this point this portion so the portion of the pipe is above the water level in the tank a and this is called as the higher this is actually this this kind of arrangement is called as siphon the raising portion of the siphon is called as inlet leg and the highest point is known as submit and the portion between submit and the lower reservoir is known as outlet leg so this is the inlet leg and this portion highest portion is called as submit and the outlet leg is this is the outlet leg which is connecting the highest portion and the uh, the other reservoir lower lower reservoir the siphon is a long pipe the loss of head due to the friction is very high comparing with the other losses hence the minor losses are minor losses in the siphon is neglected the pressure in the submit can be theoretically reduced to, to minus 10.3 meter of water but in practice the pressure is only minus 7.6 meter of water so the absolute pressure in the siphon 10.3 minus 7.6 is equal to 2.7 meter of water so if the if the pressure in the submit less than 2.7 meter of water the dissolved gases in the water will come out and the collect in the submit so that will so therefore the siphon should be laid in such that no section of the pipe will be more than 7.6 meter above the hydraulic gradient line at that section so what will happen when the dissolved gases are coming out of the water so it will block the water flow so to avoid the block of the water flow we have to see that so we have to we have to look into the design that the siphon should be laid in such that no section of the pipe will be more than 7.6 meter above the hydraulic gradient line at that section so that is the condition when you are laying pipe across the hill for pumping the water and the power transmission through the pipe so when the water is flowing through the pipeline what is the power transmitted that we have to calculate so the power transmitted at the outlet of the pipe so the p equal to uh, weight of the water per second in the head at the outlet so weight of the water equal to rho into g into pi by 4 d square into v so uh, mass into acceleration due to gravity is the weight so mass equal to rho a v so rho into pi by 4 d square into v is the mass multiplying by g is the weight of the liquid in the head at the outlet capital h minus 4 fl v square by 2 gd so h is the height of the water in the tank Uh, minus the head loss due to friction 4 fl v square by 2 gd so this is the power at the outlet of the pipeline then the efficiency of the power transmission so the power available at the outlet of the pipe divided by power available at the inlet of the pipe so this is equal to w into h head minus hf divided by w into h which is head minus head loss due to friction divided by total head of the water the condition for maximum efficiency is obtained by differentiating the equation with respect to v and equating to zero so dp by dv equal to zero hf equal to h by 3 so the power transmission will be maximum when the head loss due to the friction is equal to 1/3 of the total head in the inlet of the pipeline so the efficiency will be maximum when hf equal to h by 3 so hf is the head loss due to friction and h is the total head of water available in the tank so the efficiency maximum efficiency equal to h minus h of h by 3 divided by h equal to 2 by 3 which is 66.7 percentage so in the power transmission the maximum efficiency obtainable uh, is 66.7 percentage and the water hammer so we can have this kind of situation we have a water tank where the water available at the head h and we have a valve at the outlet of the pipeline So consider the pipe AB connected to a tank fitted with the water at a height h from the center of the pipeline uh, and uh, at the uh, at the left end and the gate valve to regulate the flow of flow at the right end. So we have the water and we have a valve here at the point B. When the valve is completely open, the water flows with the velocity v in the pipeline. When the valve is suddenly closed, the water in the pipeline suddenly brought at rest. So this will be sudden. This will be sudden. there will be sudden rise in the pressure due to the momentum of the moving water being destroyed so when the water is continuously flowing there is a momentum set up when you close the valve suddenly the momentum is destroyed so the there will be uh, there will be pressure rise there will be sudden pressure rise in the pipeline so the pressure rise creates the wave 
which moves in the water with the velocity of sound uh, towards the tank. So, water will wavy flow, the wave will move in the backward direction. The wave creates noise called knocking. Also, the high pressure wave has effect of hammering action on the walls of the pipe and hence is known as water hammer. So, when we suddenly close the valve, there will be backward flow because of the momentum loss, momentum destroy. So, the backward flow will create a uh, impact on the pipe wall that is called as water hammering effect. And uh, we have another topic called the commercial pipe. So, the pipe we are using commercially, the various pipes we are using as per the standard. So, commercial pipe are the pipe with the standard specification available in the market, which can be selected and used by the customer based on the requirement and application. The standard specification of the commercial pipe are fixed by as per ASTM, American Society of Testing Material and ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineer. Some of the standard pipes used are ASTM A53, A120, A106, A335, A312, A3766, ASME SA192, SA106 and SA53. So, each specification will have different dimensions and the thickness of the pipe. And the commercial pipes tubes are classified based on the application of the use. This may be pipes, pressure tubes or mechanical tubes. Based on the production method, this may be seamless rod pipes, uh, seamless cast pipes and seam, seam welded pipes or tubes. So, the seamless pipes are very, very much used in the boiler application because in the boiler application, when you have seamless pipe means there is no welding across the, uh, throughout the length of the pipe. So, when you look at the pipe, uh, there will be some welding. If you look at the common GI pipe, galvanized iron pipe, there will be a welding and the welding is called a seam. So, it is what a seamed pipes, but the seam is not preferred. So, seamless pipes are preferred for the boiler applications and the, the standard identification of the pipe and uses of the pipe, standard pipes, pressure pipes, line pipes, water well, water well pipes, uh, oil country tubular goods and other pipes. So, we have mechanical structural service pipe, low pressure service pipes, refrigeration, refrigeration pipe, dry clean pipe, they are the standard pipe, pressure pipes, liquid or gas or vapor service pipes, service for elevated temperature and pressure, lines threaded or plain end gas or oil steam pipes, uh, well, water well pipes, dry pipes, driven well pipes, pump pipes and a turbine pump pipe and uh, oil country, well, well tubing, drill pipes and conduit pipes, nipple pipe and sprinkler pipe. These are all the uses and this is the identification, standard identification of the pipe. So, we stop here. So, these are all the books I published in mechanical engineering and you may find the fluid mechanics and machinery which will be useful for this subject. You can refer to it for additional information or problem in this subject and I have a YouTube channel where I upload the video lectures on the subject. You can subscribe the channel and use the video lectures for your better learning and for passing the gate examination. So, thank you for watching. You please post your comments in the comments box. You subscribe the channel and you can write to my mail ID for uh, any clarification or doubt in the subject. So, we will meet again in another video in the subject field mechanics and machinery.